Restoration of spirituality. Tell somebody you need to be spiritual. You need to be spiritual. You know, today's sermon, I just I just came to just pick some points to you. You can never be in life without being spiritual. Anytime you meet a person, the person tells you, I don't believe in anything, it's a lie. It's a lie. Everybody believes in something. As for me, I go, no, never. Just that they haven't told you. But we're about to enter into a realm. We're about to get to the level where our spiritual life will move to the next dimension. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. Now, let's all read together. Let's go. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to throw about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, yeah. David, Samuel, and the prophet. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouth of lions? Sick. Ask your neighbor, can you shut the mouths of lions? Can you shut the mouth of lions? Let's continue. Quench the fairy of the flames and escape the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength. Whose weakness was turned into strength. strength. Let's go. Who became powerful in battle and wrought a foreign armies. Help me to talk to somebody and say, my neighbor. My neighbor. You've got to be spiritual. You've got to be spiritual. You may be seated. Man is a spiritual being. There are so many things that happen in life that when we tell you to explain, you cannot explain. If you go through a situation that cannot be explained, you've got to know that it's never from the physical point of view. God is working, the devil is also working. But anytime God is working and the devil is working, God is supposed to have the upper hand in all of this. Today, any battle that is going on in your life, Jesus. I move your spiritual life to the next dimension. Jesus. Listen, if you are there and you don't have the energy to pray, your spiritual life has gone down. If you are there, you have, don't, don't have the energy to read the word of God, there is an issue. If for a long time, you don't have the affinity to fast, it's very dangerous. If you wake up and there's no energy to pray, it means your level is gradually going down. And when your spiritual level goes down, you are very empty. And any time you are empty, any wind can blow you off. Jesus. But when you carry weight, no wind can take you away. Amen. And let me tell you, somebody's grace over their lives is different from what is over your destiny. That's right. A man of God can be powerful. I can be powerful. I can be praying for you. But if you don't develop your own spirituality, a day will come that you are supposed to also call on your own God. It's not everybody, every day, you can pick your phone and call a man of God. You're supposed to get to the realm and see the issue and say, the devil, move away from me. And God will cause the devil to move away from you. That's right. Because you meet, you meet a brick wall. And the only thing you can say is that God, let the wall go down. The Bible talks about a couple of people, 32 mentions all these guys and all these guys that their names are mentioned all of them had issues i'm gonna say issues. issues so sometimes spirituality the devil will let you know that you are supposed to be perfect before you're supposed to be powerful no god will now perfect your life look at gideon when god called him he said god i'm afraid i will not go barak the same thing as for something you already know his story jephthah said he will not go as for david we know his history Someone to the same. But it says, but these people, they were able to shut off the mouths of lions. When lion came, they never ran away. They confronted the lion. Today, I want to ask you one question. Do you have the energy to confront a lion? Say, man of God, what kind of lion? Yeah, we don't live in a jungle now. But some human beings are lions. My goodness. Some friends are lions. Mm. When they open their mouth to roar and back, you don't run away. You confront them and tell them, let the mouth of the lion be shut off by the fire of God. Whoever is smiling with you, but behind the scenes is a lion. Today we shut off their mouths. We shut off their mouths. We shut off their mouth by fire. Say, I shut off your mouth. Now, the, the Thursday we came here to work on the t-shirt. I was in the office, I think I was there with Mama G, doing a the direction for her. 
I was just there, and I had a serious knock in the office. You know, when I'm in the office and somebody is knocking, when the knock is like this, I know that somebody wants to enter. But this was not just a knock like this. It was this. When the knock comes more than five times, I said, ah, what is happening? So I said, just come inside. They came in and they are carrying a child. And the child has lost consciousness and the child is dying. They, they, you hold the child, the child is cold. You hold the child, the child is stiff. The child, all the eyes are gone, only the white remaining. They said they were on their way home. And the child lost life. And now, on, in the car, they were now contemplating. Should we continue to go to a hospital? Or should you return to the testimony city? And they said, we left testimony city going home. We can't move from here and go to the hospital. So they carried the child and brought the child. Mama G was there. When they brought the child, the child was gone. Cold, hard, cannot do anything. I said, no way. If God is here, Jesus. let God arise. That's right. If God has delivered people from coma, then something will happen. That's right. I asked them to get me oil. I told them to get me water. I asked of the name of the child. They said the child is called Kwesi. I held the child. I said, Kwesi, come back to life. The child was still stiff. I said, Father, you have to wake. Mama G was there. A couple of people too were there on that day. How many people, how many people were there on the reception day? You two were there. Yes, yes, someone was there. Auntie was there. I said, in the name of Jesus, from nowhere, the child sneezed and came back to life. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Oh, I declare in the name of Jesus. They said when they brought the child, when they brought the child, everybody at the reception started praying. Because the child was gone. The eye was off. How many people were there? How many people were there? Everything was off. I said, God, you've got to come through. Because if these people could shut off the mouths of lions, we too can shut off the mouths of disaster. That's right. That's child, right. child of God, hear me? Hear me? You're supposed to get to the realm that when you enter into a place, they can feel that something is with you. Jesus. You're supposed to get to a place that when somebody wants to attack you, they say that, hey, this one, don't try. Because the last time you try, something happened. You are supposed to get to the realm where Juju men and a confess shall call your phone and apologize to you. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. They will call you, apologize to you, and say that I was sent to destroy you, but when I tried working on you, something happened to me today i speak by the blood of jesus i speak by the message of god let there be a shift and a turn around so we start fire when trouble begins in a house it's supposed to end with you that's right i said when trouble begins in a house the moment it gets close to you it's supposed to end with you right. because you are totally different today let the altar <laughs> empower you to that realm by fire <laughs> shall i receive it i receive it and i'll show you the six ways to empower yourself and get to the realm of the spirit that's right because child of god let me tell you life is never normal don't take life the way you see life if you keep quiet and tell yourself Enyeshia, it will still be Enyeshi. And by the time you are aware, disaster has already happened. But I speak from this altar. The name of Jesus. I declare from this altar. The let the altar of Jehovah, Jesus. let the power of God. So I am powerful. I am powerful. Place your hand on your heart. Place your hand on your heart. And say, according to the mercy of God. According to the mercy of God. According to the grace of God. According to the grace of God. I experience, I experience the strength of God. The strength of God. If life is not spiritual, how can the lady, I think the lady is here, the lady's son vanished, was missing for more than six months. They went everywhere. They cannot see the child. Now they said they went into a place and the person told them, your child is dead. Go and buy a small coffin and bury the child. They said, why? They said, we called the spirit of the child and the child was talking to us that I'm dead though, I'm dead though, so do, me, do funeral for me. Now they brought the child's picture to me. I said to them, the child is not dead. 
and your child cannot die. I told the sister, put it on the altar. After about one month, she came back to me, man of God, you told me my child will come back to life. All my family members have gone to different places. They said the child is dead. Why are you wasting my time? Where is the sister? Where is the sister? She's there. They go everywhere. They said that the child is dead. I said, your child is not dead. No, no, when the child was taken, snatched and kidnapped, they took the child to Kumase, to B.E., to Wenchi, to Togo, to Niger, to Ebijai, to, 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 to Beni. And that's where the child left where the child was. And now when they brought out the child, they said every day, they will go there and inject the children over there. But the child said, only him, when they are injecting the children, when they come to him, they stop. When they get to him, they stop. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. I said, when they get to him, they stop. When they get to him, they stop. Why? Because his name was on an altar. Today, I came to move your name to an altar. Jesus. Now, if there's any court battle against you, Jesus. fighting your destiny, Jesus. let the altar of God work on your behalf. Jesus. Shout fire. fire. Shout it one more time. Fire. Say, I am powerful. I am powerful. Listen, my spirituality has to set me apart. That's right. When I move, I'm supposed to move to a realm where people shall see the hand of God about my life. That's right. From today, I came to let somebody know. Jesus. Move in confidence in life. Jesus. Never run away. Never hide away from battles. Confront battles. Right. And tell the battles, enough. Enough. I said enough. enough. I said enough. enough. I said enough <laughs> is enough. One young, young guy came here. A footballer. I called him out and said to the young man, your, your shoe for football has been, sent, has, has been sent to Pando. I said, where do you come from? He said, I come from Obos. I don't come from Pando. I said, your, your foot, your umpabwa is at Pando. That's when the, the sister by him said, oh, man of God. When he had issues with the legs, somebody introduced us to somebody at Pando. And when they went over there, look at what happened. Somebody was problem with the foot who can play football. The person said to him, open your hands. I want to take a picture of your palms. And I'm taking the picture of your palms to somebody to check something. I said to the young man, your picture of the palm they took, they took away your destiny. The world is some way. If the leg is paining him, why are you taking picture of the palms? Because your destiny is in your hands. Jesus. If you have made some unnecessary mistakes Jesus. that is haunting you, Jesus. today by the, oh, I can't feel somebody. I said, if you have made, oh, I can't feel somebody. I said, if you have made any kind of mistakes that is finding a way to torment you by the blood of Jesus, I dismantle it and I crush it right now. So I crush it. I crush it. Now. now. So I am powerful. I am powerful. When we read Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, he says to be carnally minded is death. When you walk in the physical, you are already gone. Give me the verse 6. When you walk in the physical, you are gone. The mind of the sinful man is dead. But the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. That's the meaning. Give me the KGV. So if you move in life, your mind is never spiritual. Any death can blow you. Today I speak by the power of God. Jesus. I speak in the name of Jesus. Jesus. He said to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Somebody shout life and peace. Life and peace. Shout it one more time. Life and peace. For the last time. Life and peace. Because sometimes you don't know the person you are walking around with. That's right. You don't even know that they are against you. One young man um, called us from America a couple of weeks ago. Why? He said anytime he comes to Ghana, you know, he, he was in the American army. So when he comes to Ghana, um, he comes to Ghana with. He, <clears throat> just mute me one minute. That's what this one is. One minute.
-hmm. And this is where the tip off was coming from. He said, so they arrested him. They, they took him on bail. He went home. Now his friend he's been doing the business with in Ghana. Because when they come to Ghana, because he, he shipped cars and put it inside. When he landed, the friend called him, have you landed? He said, yes. The friend said, ah, I'm going to the airport. No, see, I didn't. I said, I'm going to go to the airport. I said, I'm going to go to the airport. I said, ah. I said, I said, ah. I said, ah. Ah, was on my own show. Was it a bit of Was we a source of No, 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 no. Ah, no, 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 took the information hey whoever is around you Church, when you are spiritual when they walk to you you know who they are that's right before they hug you you stand back and say i can see your mind today by the blood of jesus by the reason of the oil and the anointed may the altar speak on your behalf He came, we were praying for him. He was at the national security and I told him that young man, I see handcuffs on your hands. The videos are there. The brother started crying. When you see a man crying, you see a man crying. He did a business with somebody at the port and the individual has stolen the money and run away with it. And now they have held him. And now either he's go, he goes to jail and also pays everything. I said, no way. They've been looking for the person. They can't find the person. And I told him, don't worry. I told God to come through for you. Go and look for your shoe you normally take to work more time and bring it to the altar. He brought it to me. I prayed on and I put in oil. Now the date for the court battle came. After he did the direction. The case has been going on for how many years? For three years. The guy who took, who took away the money is nowhere to be found. After we did the direction for him. He got to the court. From nowhere, the guy appeared and said, I'm sorry. Leave this guy alone. I am the one behind it. I'm ready to pay everything. Leave him alone. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Oh, this is the brother. This is the, wave your hands. This is the brother. You're supposed to get to the realm where some things can never come around you. That's right. Say, I am spiritual. I am spiritual. Say, I am powerful. I am powerful. How can you reconcile this one? Look at the man who came here. A Muslim man. He's about to go and do his PhD in London. Working with the European Union. Three days to enter. And go back to London to do his PhD. He felt a pain. They went to check him. They say your kidneys are damaged. A guy less than 42 years. All his colleagues... Who got a scholarship have entered only him he cannot go because he's supposed to start dialysis when they brought the guy you were here when he came to testify they brought the guy plaster here dialysis he sat down he cried sir so he met a man here mr nee god bless you police officer and look at the guy and say ah you used to be strong the guy said this is me they brought the guy to the office they had to carry the guy when they brought the guy they carried the guy the guy cried sir I said, I'm going to do my PhD. Three days to go to airport. Man of God, look at me. Oh. Say, man of God, I'm a Muslim. But anywhere God is, I will enter. That's right. Because I need God to come through for me. That's right. I told them to go and buy a fruit. I, I won't mention the name of the fruit. They prayed on the fruit. I told them to eat it. You saw the remaining. They came to testify. He went back to hospital. Doctor says, no more dialysis. Jeez. Your kidneys are back. Normal. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. You, you can put the interface there, the interface of the testimony all over there. Just the interface. Church, why did the enemy wait to strike at the time of PhD? My goodness. When the devil is striking, this is how he used to be. So he so as this, yes. Now, so as when he came to testify. Now the question is: sometimes when the enemy is striking, he doesn't strike you when things are normal. When your life is about to get to the next level, and to show up, 
whoever is waiting at your next level mm. i said any power at your next level mm. this is him look at him this is him at the last moment of elevation today by the virtue of the oil by virtue of the blood of jesus may you become so powerful say i am powerful i am powerful now the first way to be powerful is this never stop doing fasting fasting is between you and god and hear me don't compare your fasting life with another person otherwise you collapse and sometimes some men of God lie to us about fasting. I'm telling you. Fasting simply means going without food at a particular time. So if your own can be, you wake up in the morning, you are not eating up to 2 p.m. That you can pray is better. That going from morning to maybe 7 p.m. without no food and you're lying down there. Uh, uh, and your eyes are red. And every two minutes you are watching the time. Charlie, koda, koda, koda. Fasting should be effective. That's right. Fasting is not punishment. Jesus. But you're supposed to do it consistently. That's what will help you. If I say, ask for Prophet Daniel every day, he's fasting, so I want to be like him. Your energy is not my energy. Be careful. Then when I wake up in the morning, I don't eat. Every day I eat around 4 or 5 p.m. That's my life. I come home. And then my system is not dangerous. That's right. So your own, maybe the day of the week you are born, you say, that time, let me fast. It will empower your spirit man. When you enter somewhere, you are able to pick up things in the realms of the spirit. Today I move you to that realm. I said today I move you to that realm. Today I move you to that realm. Somebody shout fire. fire. Say I get to that realm. I get to that realm. Of authority. Of authority. And of power. And of power. Now, listen. The reason why you're supposed to be powerful and confront the enemy is this. When the enemy strikes one, and you keep quiet, he will strike two. And after you keep quiet, he will come after seven. So when the enemy strikes one, flee the enemy before he gets to number two. That's right. A woman is here who had a tenant. Where is the woman? Yes. And told the tenant, leave my, leave my house. The tenant said, I will leave, but you will see. Then the woman, they said she's there. They went to check her cholesterol. Cholesterol is normal, but her brain has cholesterol. The woman got stroke. The daughter went to work. The daughter cannot work. The daughter is, the daughter is crying. Then the boss then said, young girl, two days now when you come to work, you are crying. Why are you crying? The daughter said, my mother has got stroke from nowhere. This is the issue. Then the boss said, stop work. Don't come to work for the next one, one week. I have a church I go to. Go to power of worship. When you go tell Prophet Daniel, I'm the one that introduced you. Take your mother there. God will come through. They came on a fateful Thursday, Wednesday night. When they came, the, man, the woman came with the husband. They have held the woman. She cannot even walk. When she entered, I said to her where the thing was coming from. And I said to them, do this direction. And after this direction, just go and get some of these things and see me on Sunday. They said, no, we are not going. I said, why? They said, we are going home to bring her medication and buy the things you want us to buy. So that today, God has to come through. I love their energy. We prayed for the man. The man was here and the daughter, we prayed for them. Wherever the stroke came from. Auntie, be on your feet. Auntie, be on your feet. Stroke, no, Ayera. Look at her. The stroke has run away. Mm. Mr. Sopo, that was not the only case, oh. The woman also had blindness. She couldn't see. Do you remember? When she came to, she couldn't see. Hey, when to be here, one offer stroke on Kwan, or two stroke as I'm frowning. She couldn't see. She comes like this. And doctors said they have to do surgery as a way. Because of this matter you are going through, surgery will be an issue. So God has to come through. Let's see the testimony that the daughter sent. Let's read it. Let's read it right now. Pastor Nick, read it for me very quick. Let's go. Read it now. Let's go. So th 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 this is a testimony that the daughter sent. Let's go. Man of God, Amonte. Get my microphone. Mommy went to the hospital today for a high test and probably commenced a cataract surgery today. 
Upon doing the test, the doctor saw nothing, and we, we were confused, so he asked her to do two more tests to be sure if it is not their machine that is failing them. And lo, when the miracle came, the doctor said he would do again. Maybe it's their machine failing them. Continue. And lo and behold, he said her eyes are clear and that he can't perform the surgery for her today. Unless four months later, when he runs another test to see again truly, to truly know that indeed she doesn't need the surgery. Last week, Wednesday, she saw you on the compound and you told her that after the stroke, the doctor says it has affected her eye, so she needs a cataract surgery. And you told her to use a bottle of water to wash her face for three days, and immediately after, God came through. My mom and I are very grateful to you and God. God bless you, Prophet Daniel. And may your anointing forever be new and abandoned. I will look at the way you are clapping. She came to me with the daughter and said, Now they want to do a surgery. I said, No, just look for water. Wash your face. When you finish, use the self of the church and give to touch your eyes. Now the doctor said, We can't see any, any, anything again. Maybe it's our machine failing. Just a change of a sword, the idea, and a toe. So. Some of you that are going to perform some tests mm. and they will not find anything in your body. Mm. Today I declare any surgery, any surgery, any surgery in front of you by the reason of the blood of Jesus. I take it away from your life now. Shall I take it away? I take it away. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. You are supposed to get to that realm. Christianity with no power is an error. That's right. I said Christianity with no power is an error. That's right. A sister in the church, she's here right now. She's been sick. Every disease goes to hospital. Every man should go to hospital. Heart issues, these issues. They've done about three surgeries on the heart. I said, no way. Prayed for her and I gave her direction to take a handkerchief and take communion and do some things. She went to sleep. The whole night, she said her stomach was moving up and down. She couldn't know what to do. She went to the washroom. Something came out of her. What was it? A rat that was life. Life. Life rat. And she says the tail was too shaky. She's here. Because it's too deep, that's why I always, I don't want to point her. Because it's a too deep testimony. She said, Prophet Daniel, from that day, I am free. Rat. This is not dead one. Life. And this, this person I'm talking about is a professional. When you will be a travel home. Life. And after the life rat came out, the greatest enemy in the family died the same night. <laughs> Lift up your right hand. The reason why I call I mention some of these cases in the testimony for you to know that you can be powerful and you can do it. Lift up your hands. Auntie is here. Auntie, Udin de Biana. Udino. Auntie Vivian, good. For 17 years, she's never been able to close her eyes before. When she goes to her bed, she cannot sleep. Her eyes should be on 24-7. They've taken her to Japan. Nothing worked. Jeez. She went to Nigeria. Nothing happened. She cannot sleep for 17 years. One day, church was going on like this, and I said, today, I want to share my mantle. So I said, today, whoever can catch my mantle, take it. And I stood here, and I threw the mantle like this. Thank God she was standing somewhere, and she picked it. She said, when she picked it, she went home and put it in water. And said, Father, today, this mantle will be my sponge. I'm going to use it to bath. Father, remember me. That day, she slept her. She woke up at 9 a.m. Hear me? Since that day to today, I am talking. Auntie, since that day. Since that day. Since that day. Ah, look at the way you are clapping. She says, even in a car, even in a car, she will be sleeping. Listen, this is the realm. This is the realm. For 17 years. For 17 years. For 17 years. She says it got to a time that she lost hope. Mute me for one minute. Let me tell you something. Mute me for one minute.
May God, listen, may God give you resource. Amen. This young man standing here, the day they brought him and his friend. Where's your other friend? Where's your other friend? Where is he? Where is he? Where, oh, is he here? Wave your hand so that your, your, your brother will see you. Hello, Nigerian brother, where are you? Where are you? Uh huh, he's there. Just wave your hands. He's standing there. The day they brought them here, one police officer brought them. They had gotten the case. Another time, what they would even eat was not even there. Where they would sleep, they were sleeping in the police officer's living room. So the officer can say, Prophet, these are young men. The way they are, I don't know, trouble following them everywhere. They are sleeping in his living room. I look at the two boys, I said, there's one only one thing I'll do for you. Go and get, I said, T-shirt. Or, or was it my own T-shirt? I told you to go and get white T-shirts. They went to get white T-shirts. They are sleeping in the police officer's living room. I said, go and bring T-shirts. They wore the T-shirts. The next time I saw them, they said, prophet. I said, the next time I saw them, they said, prophet. We just, we didn't say smash. We just finished building an apartment. We want to dedicate it. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Now they don't sleep there again. The next time, prophet, I built another apartment. Yes. Within the two years, they built about four apartments. Go and sit down. Go and stand here. Lift up your hands. And now he too, he has got a Ghanaian lady that are going to marry. I feel, I feel, I feel they, they've already gone down, they are knocking, right? They've already gone down, they're knocking, about to marry. Very soon. Look, look at the way he has changed. It's okay. Now they come and pack, they come and pack Range Rover Vela, 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 Vela. Lift up your right hand. On the back of Vela, and I want to say, when you're bedding a cheek. Lift up your hands, Emma. Emma, open. Lift up your right hand. Pack it, Range Rover. Toyota, different cars. Swung. Lift up your hands. And 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 no more. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what, what the sister said? Papa, any man in a, a man in a. Don't you like good life? Don't you like good life? So say I like good life. Every woman likes a good life. Am yes, I saying the truth? Yes, so why did you say no? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to let you know that she likes good life. Other one, I know me was stirring him. Okay, okay, okay. She said when the guy was sleeping in the hall, she was still in the story. Hey. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your hands. Oh, say, but say, no more change. No more change, me boy. Lift up your hands. That, listen, the policeman had to beg me, sir, prophet, and one more boy is here. Just, they want to even finish their life. I said, bring me white t shirt only. Lift up your hands. One direction. One direction. But I like what the girl said, prophet, when he was sleeping in the hall. I was in the picture. The question is, how many ladies here that can be with a guy when he's sleeping in the hall? Ah. How many ladies here? Mama, that's Stay where your, your answer comes. Lift up your right hand. How many? How many? How many can stay with you when you are sleeping in the hall? Lift up your hands. How many? How many here? How many here? How many here? Listen. Out of the uh, out of the whole 600 people here, it's only two ladies I saw their hands. Louisa, Louisa said, I want soft life. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Hello, Pastor Robert. They are struggling over there. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your hands. Say by fire. By, by fire. fire. 
Say by fire. By fire. I empower my spiritual life. I empower my spiritual life. So let me tell you, number one is prayer. Number two, reading the word of God. Three, fasting. Four, holiness. Five, taking the holy communion. And the next one, sacrifice. A powerful person sacrifices. If you don't sacrifice, you are not powerful. One, one prayer, lift up your hands. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. My story is changing. My story is changing. I empower my spiritual life. I empower my spiritual life. As I clap and pray. As I clap and pray. Somebody clap your hands and pray. Somebody clap your hands and pray.